The theme of today's program is Conscious Business Engine for a Thriving Earth. And, of course, today is Earth Day. So we're uh, really excited to be sharing messages with you on Earth Day. Ronaldo Brutico is our special guest, and he'll, he'll be with us live. He's the perfect guest for Earth Day. Ronaldo is the founding uh, CEO of the World Business Academy, a founder of Business Academy of the Future, and a leader of other organizations that are strong advocates for a conscious business revolution. He coaches and advises leaders and teams globally. I'd like to bring in my partner and colleague at this point, John Thomas. He's the Humanities Team Conscious Business Director. Uh, John, do you want to say hi real quick? Yeah. Hello, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here again on one of these webinars. Um, I'm just uh, really excited about today's program with Ronaldo. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you, John. And uh, John and I are co-hosting this program together. You'll hear a lot more from John shortly. I'd like to share a few more words about Earth Day. Uh, first, I hope that you're able to get outside today to experience the wonder and the connection uh, with the Earth. Uh, as we, of course, the, the Earth is our dear, dear friend and gives us so much. Um, I had a chance to skid out with my daughter and my dog and just walk outside, and it was, it was stunning. I hope you get that opportunity, too. Next, I just want to share that the Conscious Business Initiative that we're talking about today is anchored in the Conscious Business Declaration that was initiated by Humanities Team and our partners. And I want to read provision number five because it relates to Earth Day. It says, business must go beyond sustainability and the philosophy of do no harm to restoring the self-renewing integrity of the Earth. And I, and I don't probably need to share, this is so important. Uh, today, leaders from all over the world are gathered in New York City to sign the Paris Climate Change Agreement. But scientists share that if everyone enforces it, temperatures will still rise by 3.5 degrees Celsius. And of course, this is too much. Scientists share that 2 degrees Celsius should be the target. It's important that we all come together to protect the Earth. And of course, this is where you and I come in. We need a lot of certified conscious business change agents to transform business because, of course, business is where a lot of the Earth's pollution comes from. It's time to transform business to conscious business and uh, thank you, all of you, uh, for being here to be part of this Conscious Business Revolution. And uh, Ronaldo, uh, welcome to you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> thank here. you, Steve. Can you hear me okay? I can. And I'm going to give you, uh, I gave you a brief intro here just a minute ago, but I'm going to give you a proper introduction in a minute. I shared we're uh, just totally uh, psyched to have you here with us on Earth Day, Ronaldo. Thank you. And i got to tell you what's so funny is we just had a virus attacked our computers I could not open my desktop there. We did our practice on John, and oh, okay. we, we have a we have a guy in San Francisco trying to repair it from that end. I'm now on my laptop, which the virus hasn't hit yet, although it seems to be infecting all the other computers. And this was on a different internet uh, um, link last night, so that was the delay. Forgive me, everyone. I don't mean to be impolite and be late. I literally we were scrambling, and you might have seen Jane in my right shoulder a minute ago. We've been scrambling to try and get on the air for quite some time. Well, it was great it worked out with yeah. that backup. I was so worried. I was going to disappoint okay. you guys. Anyway. Great to have you here. Yeah, we're, you're going to hear lots of best practices. We're going to, John and I have some just wonderful questions for Ronaldo, and we're, we're just really psyched uh, that he's our special guest today. So I'm just going to share a little more before we intro Ronaldo. Um, I want to, as we get started, I thought I'd just uh, give a little background into why we're here. And I'm going to share what, what we call our elevator story in Humanities Team because it summarizes what we're up to. Um, I'm going to share it now. And if you like, go ahead and just close your eyes to just let this seep in. It's fairly short. The current standard of business isn't working. It's not sustainable for life on Earth, and people are fed up. Businesses do not operate in silos. All of life is interconnected. Everything businesses do impacts people, the environment, and the world around them. While businesses are the biggest source of some of our world's most challenging problems, they also offer the greatest hope and potential to help solve these problems. Therein lies an amazing opportunity to break through and upend the status quo by adopting a new conscious business model that creates prosperity and flourishing for all. To do this, Business must develop both the awareness and the skills to consciously evolve their organization. Humanities Team's Conscious Business Initiative 
helps change agents and leaders reinvent their organization using a structured methodology and community of practice that recognizes the interconnectedness of all of life. Okay, we're going to be talking a lot more about that, but that's kind of it, and it, what we're up to here in a nutshell. Okay, next, very briefly, I'm going to tell you what we're doing with our partners to create a global conscious businesses and a whole new income opportunity that's opening up for consultants, coaches, trainers, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and business change agents. You might uh, listen carefully and then let us know later in the program if you have any questions about this. Our first step in this conscious business initiative was to come together with global partners to create a conscious business declaration. We spent almost a year working on this. Irvin Laszlo with the Club of Budapest, and of course the Club of Budapest based out of Europe. Hiro Sanji with the Goy Peace Foundation, of course based out of Japan. And Chris Laszlo with the Fowler Center for Business out of Case Western University. Join together with us in initiating the Conscious Business Declaration. You can read it at, you can see it right on the screen there, ConsciousBusinessDeclaration.org. Please do go to that uh, web address. Please uh, sit with this declaration because I'm not going to read all of it now and sign it. Uh, the first principle in the declaration is this. We are one with humanity and all of life. Business and all institutions of the human community are integral parts of a single reality, interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. I won't read more, but there is much more, including financial, social, and ecology, transparency provisions, the Restore the Earth provision I read earlier, and much more. You can see some of it on the screen there. Please read it, sign it, and become an ambassador for it if you resonate with it. And suffice it to say that the Declaration it is revolutionary. It absolutely is. Imagine global business standing squarely in this awareness. We are one with humanity and all of life. And I just can't tell you how all of us in humanities team, how excited we are uh, about this Declaration that we think will uh, sweep the planet. And in fact, together with our partners, we're now reaching out to business and global leaders. Many have signed and are signing the Declaration now. Ronaldo Abrutico, our guest today. Hazel Henderson, Neil Donald Walsh, Jennifer McLean, Barbara Marks Harvard, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden. They're only a few of the world leaders that have signed the declaration. I think you're going to be astonished at the world and business leaders who will be signing in coming weeks and months. This is the first way, leaders joining hands and saying, this is the way business will work. The second wave is where you and I come in. We're going to need lots of conscious business change agents, CBCAs, with the training, certification, and toolkits to help start and transform businesses. After people sign the declaration, we're asking business leaders to put someone on their team through the training to transform their organization to a conscious business. If they don't have someone trained, they'll need to hire someone like you. We believe a conscious business change agent marketplace will emerge to help businesses transform into conscious businesses, and this is your opportunity to come to the front and lead. We believe that a substantial income opportunity is surfacing here for business trainers, consultants, coaches, entrepreneurs, and change agents. We'll only be offering two conscious business change agent CBCA classes this year. One is now, and one is later in the fall, probably it'll start in September. Our first course, this one starts on May 2nd, and because this is our inaugural course, we're offering it for $1,497, which is almost a 60% discount from the $3,500 regular price. This, just for the record, we believe the $3,500 regular price is a good price, a value price, and we say that from having done a lot of research in the industry. So the 60% off is amazing. We don't plan to offer it in the fall. Also, we're giving course members three free months of the community of practice, and that is a $300 value. But we're holding the class to only 100 enrollments to assure a high-quality interaction with those participating. We may fill the class and close out enrollments before Monday, May 2nd, so if you're interested, be sure to enroll. We don't want any of you to be unhappy with us. Uh, also, there is a two-week full money-back guarantee if you change your mind for some reason. Of course, change is not going to happen by signing the Declaration. It's going to happen by putting the principles of the Declaration into action. When we radically transform the institution of business and help create a world that works for all. And best of all, you can participate in this as a change maker and make great income in the process. This is what we're going to turn to next with our special guest, Ronaldo Brudico, 
John Thomas and I are going to be bringing questions to Ronaldo together. I'm going to go first. So Ronaldo, uh, we'll, we'll formally bring you in here, and thank you again for joining today's program. You've been a regular panelist on the New Bottom Line for Business panel during Global Oneness Day and an active participant in the Conscious Business Dialogue we've been having for several years. You always provide inspiring and thoughtful perspectives on conscious business. We're uh, so happy that you can be with us here today. And we're thrilled that you'll be teaching one of the classes in the Humanities Team Conscious Business Training and Certification Program, which is launching May 2nd. We'd love to hear some of your perspectives. Uh, and here I go with uh, question number one. In your role as the founding CEO of the World Business Academy, a founder of the Business Academy of the Future, and a leader of other organizations, you have been a strong advocate for conscious business revolution that's now emerging. Why is the time right for conscious business change agents to accelerate the transformation of business be beyond the near-exclusive focus on profits that we see today to embrace this broader vision, that of creating a world that works for all? So why now? Is, is the why now? The question. Yeah. Um, you know, you're familiar with that ancient Chinese curse, <laughs> and you live in interesting times. <laughs> so uh, this is probably the most interesting time. Um, certainly in the last 50,000 years to be alive. And I date that 50,000 years because that's when Homo sapiens, sapiens emerged from Pinnacle Point in the tip of South Africa and began to repopulate the earth. So that was huge paradigm shift, very, very huge. Uh, we're going through one now and this one, because of the role of business as the primary institution in global society, this one has got business at its core. Uh, there was a book I did, in fact, Maybe we should recommend people get a copy of the chapter I'm going to reference. Uh, Birth 2012, the one that Barbara Marks Hubbard did is an anthology. And um, in, in that book, I talk about the rise of the phoenix. The chapter I wrote was on, on the new business consciousness. And people maybe even want to see that short chapter just so they get a sense of what we're talking about. And in it, I talk about a system that worked for a very long time has now reached its point of maximum extension and is in the process of contraction. That's not a comment on capital markets economics. It's not a comment on socialism or capitalism or communism. It's a comment on any, any system which gets to the point where entropy sets in. And in the business, you can see this in a number of ways. Here we sit today, um, less than a week ago, the largest coal company in America, one of the largest in the world, Peabody filed for bankruptcy proceedings, and yesterday, the nation of Spain, which was the second biggest basket case in Europe, um, was, has emerged as probably one of the strongest growing economies in Europe. Radical shift between two paradigms. How do these things happen? Um, how does it happen that global business has run up against a political process which is so inadequate that the major forces of business have begun to reassume more influence and control over the political process, which was always there indirectly? but not directly. So you have the, the sunset industries, which I would name easily are the fossil fuel industries, but there are others. You know, one can argue that tobacco manufacturing is a sunset industry. But the sunrise opportunities, which clearly are the ones that deal with uh, the uh, new consciousness of renewable energy, that deal with the new consciousness of how we as individuals choose our associations based on characteristics of the heart as much as we do the mind and the wallet, which is why when people read about Silicon Valley companies, they go, wow, why does Google have massage therapists? Why do they call these office buildings complexes or campuses? Why, do, why is it that Silicon Valley is setting a tone for how to bring the best employees together? And why do they believe that in order to do that, they have to treat the employee as a whole person, which is a radical departure from the post-World War II mentality of everybody fits in an org chart that's vertical and hierarchical and candidly patriarchal. So what's happening in America right now and in the world at large, and we can go off on any of these, and I'm purposely painting a very broad canvas here, we can go off on any one of these little tributaries, but the essence of the shift that's occurring, which is a paradigm shift, remember the word paradigm is often abused because people use it improperly. A paradigm shift literally means a discontinuous change. Therefore, you cannot see there from here can't be done. It's discontinuous. You can only look back from a paradigm shift and see what in fact was what happened and what's this new leap 
So the image I'd like people to have in their minds is on a chart. If you see a rapidly rising curve, you know, going up the chart, at some point the line literally stops and a new line starts somewhere above it or somewhere below it. That new line is the beginning of the new paradigm. And for those of you who are familiar with the work of the Academy since 1986, we've been saying that the hallmark of this new paradigm is that business must be conscious, it must be aware of its role with society and, and in the process shift not only what it does and how it does it, but actually the very raison d'etre, the reason for its existence is now part of this new paradigm examination. By the way, the practical implications for your listeners and viewers is the sunrise opportunities of this new economy are enormous and very lucrative. The sunset uh, opportunities are basically in end state entropy. So you would really want to know which side of that uh, equation you were on if you were anywhere less than 50, I would guess. Yeah, awesome. Wow. Uh, lots of quotable quotes there, Ronaldo. Thank you. That's a, just a wonderful perspective as we get started here. So, Ronaldo, thanks. That you'd like, I'd like to kind of elaborate a little further on that. Um, so, thank you for all the support um, uh, around the Conscious Business Declaration. And you, of course, embraced and signed it and, and really resonated, uh, particularly with the strong stand we were taking um, on that one uh, uh, provision that Steve mentioned earlier that's um, do no harm is no longer good enough. You know, business oh. needs to rise to the to to really restore the damage that's been done and and uh, and that there's good business in that. And um, so I, I uh, this philosophy of do no harm no longer is adequate. And so I was wondering if you could go a little further with that. Um, you know, many people listening on this call and that who will be joining us in the training program are. Uh, change agents uh, want to step into this role of being conscious business change agents. What's the um, what? What does that sunrise opportunity look like, and why? Why? Um, why should we all? Uh, how do we approach this? Getting business on board for this level of transformation, and as a sunrise opportunity, how do we? Uh, how do we help create that um, excitement and inspiration? Yeah, first of all, let me let me just deal with the motivational question implicit in your in your question. Yeah, why should we care enough to do anything? And and what my dear sister Barbara Marks would say is we've run out of time to not care. Okay, you know we the nature of conscious evolution is that we have to choose to consciously evolve because the opposite that will happen through an end state of entropy is ugly on every level and terminating a terminating event or what we would think of as the bulk of human civilization as you know it. And if people want to look at some of the characteristics of something as grand as that statement, look at the enormous amount of damage that climate change is already doing and will accelerate. The hockey stick is with us. Methane releases are massive. Um, we personally believe in the academy that the river Ganges within 35 years won't have enough melt from the Goteri Glacier to keep it adequately uh, uh, full of water for the Indian subcontinent. That's a massive statement because A, think of how many hundreds of millions of people depend on that for survival, which yeah. means that destabilization will occur on a massive level, right? People kill for water when they can't get it. And the second thing is, think of what it means to a religion that is based on Mother Ganga. So it's, it's, not, just a, <clears throat> it's not just that we're going to be facing these critical shortages that absolutely are going to devastate human civilization as you know it. And I want to say to the viewers and listeners, this is not something that you have to worry about in the year 2100. This is something you better worry about in the year 2016 or because you'll never get to 2100, literally. People who think we're going to get to 2100 really do not understand the nature of the problem. And you'll see, if, as you have been noticing, the IPCC panels on climate change have been accelerating every single year the date by which they think the, 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 the disaster is coming. And the reason is because the, as they get more information and as they get more committed to this conclusion, they go, oh my God, it's happening faster. So the motive. The motive, as I say in the book with Barbara, is we have a phoenix, phoenix that has crashed. It, it, it is literally sitting here. Uh, we, we, we're fortunate in the United States, we have a, we're going to have about a 3% GDP growth this year. In a world which will eke out maybe 1.5% to 2% GDP growth, but contrasted with Europe, Japan, and other significant parts of the globe where they're negative, including Latin America, you're, you're talking about a global economic system that is creaking into the future. It's not leaping into the future. 
And what people need to understand is that to the extent they're being told anything else, they're being confused. So to your question, John, I say first let's talk about the motive. If you're under 50, you've got no choice because that's the world that's coming. And number two, even if you're over 50, you have to recognize that the inevitability of these massive whole system changes will affect everything in your life. Now, what do we do to get in the right place at that point with that emerging economy that is emerging like the phoenix from that fire? Because that's what my book was about, that chapter was about, the emergence of the phoenix, not about the crash. And the emergence says that when business recognizes that it is part of this whole system's change, we have a motto in the academy we adopted in 1986. It's time for business to become responsible for the whole, meaning because we're the most powerful institution on the planet, we absolutely have to take responsibility for all of human society. We have to reconnect with that essential uh, bond between business and society, which has been fractured badly probably since the 60s and a little bit before that. Now, what does that mean for an individual? What it means is once you change the lens, the, 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 the focus, the, 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 the lens through which you see, and you start to look with a different lens at the opportunities that are going to cross your desk anyway, it gives you a wholly different conclusion about where you want to be and how you want to do it. And it gives you a different career path, which you never would have otherwise envisioned. And why that's so important is because almost no one, I, I think it's fairly safe, including Werner von Braun and John Kennedy, no one saw that one of the direct results of landing a man on the moon and bringing him back safely would be the birth of Silicon Valley just a couple years later. Remember that landing happened in 63, Silicon Valley took off in 6970. Now, nobody saw that, but what, what they knew was something enormous occurred, in this case because of technological shift. What I am proposing is something enormous is emerging because partially a technological shift, i.e. Um, changing the planetary fuel system off of fossil fuels, but I say that this time there's an even bigger factor that's compounding it, and that is that the nature of human consciousness has arrived at a point where it can no longer accept the idea of schizophrenia in business. That is to say that we do one thing to make money, and we are yeah. other people when we're home with our wives and children, so to speak. So that schizophrenia has to be healed. Why? Because the phoenix did crash. And if you don't know it for sure, I'll be glad to point out all the places it's crashed and where it's crashing all around you. The ones that are most e obviously uh, easy to see is try to try to sell bread or conduct any other form of business in territory controlled by ISIS. Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq. Can't sell bread, can't do anything but sell bullets. Okay. Take a look at the, the, the million refugees that have hit Europe just this year, and as Secretary Kerry recently observed, that's going to be millions and millions more in the very near future because of climate change. And they can't do it the first million that just got there. So we're talking about a systemic collapse of global systems. I'm not just talking about the world of business is trying to find a way to quit shuttling money around the globe to, to, to ill effect. It's that the whole of human society is going through this shift of consciousness. And in this new consciousness, which I will characterize, and I'll end my answer with this point, most of us, well, the three of us certainly, were probably born as Homo sapiens sapiens. What does that mean? Well, Homo sapiens that preceded us was the man or woman who knows. Homo sapiens sapiens, who emerged from pinnacle point 40,000 plus years ago, is the man or woman who knows that they know. So that's reflective consciousness. That's what we were born into. The new consciousness, the new species of humanity, number 33 on the chart, 34, is Homo universalis. The man or woman who knows that they know and what they know is that we are one. So it's universal consciousness. So once you understand that we're dealing from a universal holistic consciousness, Every other piece of data that comes to your attention will have different meaning, and you will find yourself not miraculously in the right spot at the right time. Actually, by pre-programming it with your psyche and your consciousness, you will be in the right place at the right time. Mm. Well, that's a, just a perfect lead into where, uh, what I wanted to ask you about, Ronaldo. And thank you. I uh, took lots of notes, really. Um, lots of wisdom and, and uh, also best practices there. Um, there are, as we know, a lot of these other uh, manifestos and, and uh, even you know, declarations and things around in, this, in the conscious business community. Why this, this first principle in this conscious business declaration that says we are one with humanity and all of life, business and all institutions of the human community are integral parts of a single reality, interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. Why? Is this uh, an essential orienting principle for business today? And you kind of went straight at it in, these, in this last comment that you just made. 
Well, yeah, and I think that's why I made it because, see, I mean, to you it was your declaration. To me, it's what I've been living my life on. <laughs> so I saw point one. I go, sign me up. I mean, you recall, John, it didn't take any time to talk me into it. No, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> yeah, that's because that's the raison d'etre of the academy. That's what we're about. What what the World Business Academy is designed to do is to help business leadership begin to understand that. So the first part of our of our tripartite mission says to shift the consciousness of existing business leadership from that of a predator to that of a steward, because you make different decisions if you think you're responsible. And what's coming about now, because of the human species evolution, this point of conscious evolution. Because there are no more Neanderthal men alive. There are no more Cro-Magnons. There are no more Homo erectus. They're all gone. So more than 30 times we've done this. And now we're doing it again. And what I'm saying is there will be no Homo sapiens sapiens left soon. So either we, Homo universalis, and I specifically mean in the business community because of the power of business and society, either we pave the way to this new era, which is characterized mm -hmm. by oneness awareness. Mm -hmm which is a consciousness shift. If we pave the way, we should be able to lubricate the transition between species to a minimum ill effect, meaning less death, die off, and destruction. To the extent that we ignore it, that we need a consciousness shift, and that business has to literally lead the shift because it's the only institution on the planet powerful enough to do so, and understands the risk of not doing so. If we don't take that on, if we let consciousness find its own level, ISIS will look like the first act of a 15-act uh, fight. Mm -hmm. And you won't like any round better than the last one. You'll like the next round worse than the last one. And I want to remind people, we've done this before. And we even have a name for it the last time we did it. And it lasted 600 years. It was called the Dark Ages. Now, I don't think I've ever met anybody who wants to go back to the Dark Ages. There was no good deal then. Even if you were a marauding barbarian, a Goth, a Visigoth, an Ostrogoth, a Viking, it, it wasn't a good life. It was kill or be killed, and so you chose to kill. And most people did get killed. So it's very much like what ISIS is today. These are, these are warlords. That's what, the, that's what the, quote, barbarians were, and that's what ISIS is. It's a warlord. That's what Genghis Khan was, a warlord. Sometimes warlords are more successful, sometimes they're not. But the way that warlords emerge is when societies break down. And we are going through a systemic breakdown. Because the old separatist thinking doesn't fit the time we live in. It just won't solve any of our problems and frankly creates most of them. So we have to switch to a wholeness view, to a oneness view, to a consciousness of oneness. From there we make different decisions and I would say, and, and I've been fortunate to have made a lot of money in business, I, I didn't make my money and then come to this, I'm not, I made my money because of this. This is, I, I, I mean, There's a reason why I've been involved in four organic companies, that have, you know, organic food and beverage companies that have done spectacular. You know, I mean, I, I, I've been organic for 30 years. I mean, part of that is because I saw it coming. And, and if you see things coming because you're really neutral about the society that's emerging and you're not attached to the, to the, to the society's value set that is disintegrating, and I'll use an example uh, in here. I have never met a serious business player, and I've had the good fortune to know some of the best. I've never met a serious business player who thought that Donald Trump was a business person. He's not. Mm -hmm. He's an actor. He's a promoter. He's a interesting uh, reality TV star. But as Elizabeth Warren pointed out, if he'd have taken the $100 million his dad left him when he died and just put it in a, in a bond fund, he would have done better financially than the couple of billion he ended up with. So he didn't. He, he, he's not a wealth creator. So why do I pick on Trump? Only because he's in the national spotlight so much now a huge percentage of the American population thinks he's a businessman. And they actually think that when he was doing that crazy show, The Apprentice, and he goes, you're fired. <laughs> they think that's what business does. I don't know any business of any consequence that's been doing that for the last 40 years. That's, we, we don't even begin to treat people that way. And not even in really retrograde companies. You know? So my point to you is the humanistic approach to business which is increasingly the mental dynamic behind the most successful players. I'll give you a contrast that people don't know. I think the best executive probably on the planet today is Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever, because he's about sustainability thinking. He's about oneness consciousness. He's running a heck of a company, an enormous globe-straddling company, and he's willing to talk about it. Now, that, to me, and he doesn't get the airtime outside of business circles that Donald Trump commands, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because in the world that counts, there are more of us, like Paul Pullman, who are making decisions every day 
that you really need to be aware of if you want to get in, in line with, enrolled with, flow with the new business consciousness. You won't get there if you think Donald Trump has something to say to you about business, let alone the presidency, that's a whole different issue, or Peabody Cole about energy. And if you want, I can list four more or five more like that right off the top of my head that are complete non-starters. Okay? So if you, if you know that that's so, that how then shall we live? Well, because these are interesting times and because the pressure of climate change is so dramatic. And if, if you wonder how dramatic it is, okay, Houston is basically a swamp. When you get that much rain inside of three days, there's nowhere for it to go, and you get a flooded Houston. Now, there's something kind of almost mythical about the heart of modern-day fossil fuel creation and distribution, Houston, is, is, is being wiped out by rain clouds caused by climate change, okay? Clearly caused by climate change. And, and so what, what I'm saying is that people who think, even as recently as two years ago, a job in Houston for an oil company was about as good on the feed, about as good on the feed chain as you could get, the food chain, they've come to find out they're laying off like crazy. That industry is in disarray. And by the way, you can take it from me, it's never coming back. We are going to literally shift the planetary fuel system. Do you know that there's nothing more ubiquitous on the planet Earth than our fuel system? There's nothing. There's nothing more entrenched. There's nothing more powerful. There's nothing with more assets attached. And we are replacing it even while we're growing at 3% or more in the U.S. That's the difference when you have a certain consciousness. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Ronaldo. Just again, really uh, appreciate the expansive response. It's covering so much ground. Just one thing real quick. John's coming in with the next question. We, uh, to the listeners, please do bring in your questions and comments. We're going to turn to your questions and comments a little later in the program. And there's, there's uh, real fertile ground here, so I would love to hear your perspectives. Well, um, Ronaldo, thanks so much. It's always inspiring and great to talk with you. And you brought in um, historical perspectives. Um, you brought in some of the really biggest issues that we're faced right now in our culture. Um, you're also uh, a practical, uh, grounded, uh, effective uh, businessman, and you've done that um, well in, in throughout your career as well. And um, you're combining these these um, these views you've shared here with uh, with a conscious business um, uh, philosophy and approach, and you're um, you're going to be one of our faculty in the in the training class coming up, and uh, with a particular focus on the environment and what can business do about the environment. So I was uh, curious to ask you, you know, can you say a little bit about what you'll be teaching, and um, why this you know how this topic is uh, alive for you, you know, the practical. Uh, strategic things business can be doing and the opportunity that comes with that. Yeah, I, I, um, I think that the, the way cl good, the best classes go is they kind of direct themselves and you, you find out as you're doing it what is the best way to serve the people that are there to try and pick up some value from listening and interacting. So it, it certain, to a certain extent, I, I, I will tell a couple of success stories. I'll give you an example. How does a young man living in a yurt basically off the grid on an organic farm, go from getting one business person to co-sign a loan for $25,000, and less than nine years later, he's running a $30 million renewable energy company per year, per year, and growing dramatically, by the way. That young man is Stephen Gates. I was glad to sign the loan. So I can tell you those success stories about how people uh, have emerged from basically extraordinarily humble beginnings, and we know them all from Silicon Valley. I mean, you know, what was any of the greats in Silicon Valley, you know, 10 years before they got famous. A dropout from Harvard, apparently. <laughs> Look at some of their pedigrees. So the point is that we can, we can talk about those, and maybe there's a good reason to talk about success stories, and I can talk about the founder of uh, Kvita, which is the fastest growing organic probiotic beverage in America. Um, I'm sure they're going to be, by the end of this year, they'll be annualizing at 60, 70 million dollars a year in sales up from nothing just a few years ago. Um, uh, Nutiva has become a huge organic company in the hemp seed and coconut oil arena. Um, we've done pretty good in a couple areas of company, other companies. And I was the founding chairman, by the way, of Kavita. I was intimately involved in the growth and success in Nutiva. Um, I'm the founding CEO of a couple other organic food companies, cosmetic companies. So we can talk about those kind of things. And by the way, I've, and I've done a lot in renewable energy, as I know is the slant we'll get into, which is why I use Stephen Gates as my first example, and I'll get off the organic thing now. 
Well, we can talk about those examples, but you know, I find that is helpful in one sense, but kind of an old paradigm approach to the question. I think the real question is, how then, so then how shall we live? You know, what I'm really intrigued by and impressed by is millennials are seemingly automatically going to a set of values which is far more basic to human consciousness. Values that I would say are more based upon lifestyle choices, which are more humanistic and holistic, than their parents. And certainly, probably more so than their grandparents. So there's a possibility this class, if it's full of millennials, will actually deal with not so much the examples of, gee, who hit a home run and how'd they do it, which I think there are a lot of places you can go to hear that kind of stuff. Hopefully what we'll get into is the more fundamental thing is, what do we mean by consciousness? What do we mean by a shift in consciousness? And what do we mean about that from the perspective of business? Because typically people don't think of the words business and consciousness in the same sense. <laughs> okay? they, and, and, and as you know, my life has been about bridging those two worlds. How do you bridge the etheric plane to the material plane of reality? How do you bridge from the world of ideas of consciousness to somebody built a car? Well, the great success stories of all time, let's take the uh, Henry Fords. Before he could build an assembly line, in his mind, he had the car that went down it, and then he built it. So first you have to conceive. First it appears in consciousness, as Napoleon Hill would say, and then you can execute it. So what my career has been about for the last 40 years is, is having a consciousness that opened my eyes to what was happening and going to happen, and not being distracted by the inducements of a passing moment of how much richer I could get or how much more famous I could get because neither one of those in my consciousness matters much. What really matters is how aligned am I with this conscious being having a spiritual experience. The paraphrased um, uh, Chardin. Okay? So we're not, we're, we're not uh, humans occasionally having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience, to paraphrase Chardin. Now, if people come from that perspective, the shift in business is astronomical. It is amazing. Because then we, in business, don't see ourselves as doing a nice little polite thing here and there and endowing a symphony or paying for some good works in the world. We get engaged at a fundamental level. Let me end with this. I am astoundingly impressed by the fact that Warren Buffett would take all that wealth give it to Gates with the requirement that he's got to get rid of it at a certain speed, knowing that Gates with that challenge would have to put all of his attention, leave being chairman of the board of Microsoft, and take on the planet Earth as his next goal, which is what Gates has done. So, so Buffett and Gates, and you know, just one little tributary of that is getting the billionaire's pledge signed, which now 150 billionaires have signed, by the way, to put 50% of their wealth on or before their death into the public good. Zuckerberg, 99, and his wife, 99% of their wealth is going to go to nonprofit. Why is that happening? What I would suggest to you is because people at that level of success have come to understand that what they were told was success, which they long ago achieved, turns out wasn't the real success. The real success is being able to shift your consciousness and being able to come into a how can I serve mentality from a how can I dominate mentality. Awesome. Well, boy, that. Uh... Uh, so glad to have you part of the Conscious Business Curriculum, Ronaldo. Your, your perspective is just so right on target. I want to just go a little deeper, actually, into what you're talking about here. Uh, one of the themes that's recurred here during these webinars this week is for these conscious business change agents, you know, are there real opportunities? Is something emerging? So people, uh, question, listeners have said, you know, what's here now? Uh, how fertile is this, this ground? And, and you shared a little earlier that uh, the sunrise opportunities, as you call them, are enormous. Uh, during the webinars, I shared of my own experience in Silicon Valley in the, in the 1990s when I was the CEO of a company. Uh, we went from zero and two guys in an executive suite to, in nine years, uh, $75 million in revenue. And uh, just it was from implementing uh, these practices, these conscious business practices. And uh, they, I shared one of the things that was ironic was in going from a focus just on profit to this 4P focus where we're focused on presence, which is the divine in life people, planet, and profits, and of course profits are essential, but where, where we shifted the focus to the four, that um, our, our, our revenue growth actually accelerated. We got more revenue and profit growth, and, and that was just the beginning, because our employees were so much more passionate, where there was this real 
I'll call it loving kindness, you know, that was uh, and, and acknowledgement of oneness that was in the culture. Our customer satisfaction soared, our stakeholder community uh, just had more glue and, and uh, closeness uh, and, and more. Uh, but, um, you know, can, can you address this and uh, maybe go deeper into this? These sunrise opportunities are enormous. So for these conscious business change agents, what, what, what do you see? And what would you recommend to listeners? Yeah, well, I w would, but I mean, first I want to make something else clear because it's um, it's important to recognize that if you come from this level of awareness, it's something that you can do in any corporate or business activity you're in, no matter what your position is, and no matter what the company does, because you can bring to it a new level of of awareness. So I'm I'm not urging everybody to jump out of every traditional company they belong to. In fact, there's something to be said for. Uh, being a change agent within large organizations, uh, and I think that's I support that. And I would say to people, if you if you start to think this way, you will have a more successful career, whether you stay in a traditional business ar arrangement or not. And I, and I want to hold that out as a carrot because it's true. I, I, I I'll, just, I'll underscore that too, Ronaldo. And it's that was, that's been my experience too. You know, it's not about jettisoning out of uh, the business you're in, but sometimes you all of, you see all these amazing things you can do even inside a traditional business. So just want yeah. to uh, underscore that. Yeah, and, and you impact, as you know, from your your work in Silicon Valley, John. I, you, you know that the impact you're going to have is not predictable, but after the fact, clearly measurable. So what happens is you start being the change you want to see. And miraculously, changes start happening around you. Well, people don't expect that. It's actually kind of funny because we all know that that's how it works. And we come up with words like synchronicity and serendipity to disguise the obvious, which is we're, we're, we're playing with a, a more full set of cards, a bigger deck than we had walking into this game. That's probably the advantage of Homo Universalis, just like Homo sapiens sapiens had a peak advantage over Homo sapiens. And Homo sapiens was an enormous leap forward from Neanderthal man. So we, we have this opportunity within our existing organizations, and I'm not telling anybody to abandon organizations, with one exception. If you work for a tobacco company, you can't get out. Yeah. Because the ultimate illegitimate purpose of business is to make money by destroying other people's lives. So when your business is addicting people at the earliest age and keeping them addicted until you kill them with your product in order to make a profit, that's illegitimate, should be illegal, and frankly should be criminal. So I'm going to take them off the table. If you're, in a, if you're working for a tobacco company, I can't help you, and frankly, don't even really want to try. I, I sort of recognize you're a casualty of the last era. <laughs> you know? And um, you know we don't have dinosaurs anymore. We just use them in our gas tanks, but they're gone. And if you want to be one of them, God bless, I'm just not interested in it. Number two kinds of industries are industries that um, are refusing to recognize their legitimate social obligation. I would include fossil fuel companies in that. And I would say, if you don't make it your business to change the fossil fuel companies that you work for into energy companies, which would be phenomenal and would make you a very rich person and will save those companies from going out of business, um, if, if you don't want to do that, then you got to get out of fossil fuel. Don't, don't think you can dally there and, and like I say, you can't dance with the devil even in the moonlight. Because okay? you're, if you're not going to be that change agent, you better get out of there because it's such a toxic and caustic environment, you're not going to do well third kind of industry I would take. Industries which see as their zeitgeist the extension of armed conflict. So it, it, it's very tough to raise your consciousness. And There's an old saying, how can you soar like an eagle if you fly with turkeys? If everybody around you is in the business figuring out how to more efficiently kill people, it's hard for you to be a voice of enlightened consciousness. It's, it's, it's hard for me to picture the Dalai Lama working for a military contractor. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to picture Brother David Stendhal Rast working for a military contractor. Why? Beca not because they are better than that, and neither one of those guys are judgmental. It's because it's inconsistent with where they are coming from and who they are as a conscious being. And so knowing that, they put themselves in positions where being consciousness, being conscious is, a, is an asset, not a liability. So having dispensed with the fact there are a few industries and places you don't want to be, Every other industry is wide open. The butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker are ready for transformation. It could be your time in the sun. You take a company like Panera Bread, who realized that if you, had a, if you really cared about your customers, you really wanted to give high-quality food without chemicals, without additives, you wanted to give back to society, and all you were selling was soup and bread 
you could make a business out of it. Gentlemen, that's one of the oldest businesses in the world. And the folks at Panera have recontextualized it as a conscious business activity. And they're doing a great job. So the sunrise opportunities aren't just in new stuff. But let's go to the new stuff. Clearly, if I said it, as I said it a moment ago, because switching the planetary fuel system is the most, it's the largest whole system change that human society can currently envision. There is no system that's bigger, more powerful, more ubiquitous, and more interlaced with every facet of your daily life than fossil fuel industry. And we are, we are getting rid of it faster than the people can even imagine in the fossil fuel industry. And I'll give you examples of how we know that's true. Well, I can tell you how it's true, because oil is at $40 a barrel. And everything they've done is to try to get it back up to $100 a barrel. And they can't no matter what they try, including all the political machinations, controlling the leaks to the press, which are false. I mean, all kinds of stuff is going on. And they still can't get it above $40 a barrel, and they never will. Or if they do, it'll only be for a brief emergency because a whole bunch of refineries are wiped out on the Gulf Coast because of a climate change event. Okay, so you got 22 refineries down there. You knock a few out, you'll have a temporary spike. But it won't be lasting. So on the trajectory that goes for the next 30 to 50 years, fossil fuel industry is gone. We are switching out the planetary fuel system. All the industries that replace the planetary fuel system as you know it are in massive opportunities for growth. So the ones that people clearly understand the quickest are how, for example, in the state of California, which has had a phenomenal economic rebound, last year, I believe, something like 25 to 30 percent or more, actually more than 35 percent, of all the new job creation in California last year was solar energy. Interesting. So that would tell me if I was a guy who was in the business of, of um, strip mining coal in Wyoming, might want to go and live in a better place, California, and do and do um, renewable energy with solar panels. Except for the fact, in Wyoming, they have now developed an enormous wind resource, and they're selling it to California. So you don't even have to move to California for like Wyoming. Just get out of coal and move into wind. Okay. And by the way, you can buy wind, green wind, from Wyoming, FOB California, for five cents a kilowatt hour. To put some context on that, my light bill in the city of Santa Barbara is 18 cents a kilowatt hour. So we got lots of margin here. <laughs> this is something business knows how to work with. Good margins. So I can take the example of the Sunrise Industries, solar, wind. I can lead you to other ones. There's going to be a revolution in what's called the hydrogen economy. My last, my last end book and my first digital book was on the hydrogen economy. Um, it comes out of my work on energy for the last 20 plus years. So all of these things, and if, and, and if you want to know where all the opportunities in that, you can break those down. I'll give you one more and then I'm going to be quick. Probably the biggest economic boom that we will experience in the next 10 to 15 years will be in the world of bioengineering, biogenetics, epigenetics, etc. So what Silicon Valley was from 1970 till let's say the year 2010, which was a pretty good run, that was a 40-year run that was massive, changed everything on the planet, is still changing everything on the planet. As big as that was, I'm predicting that the the biotech revolution, which is basically the headquartered in San Diego, California, will dwarf Silicon Valley in time. Now that is a, I'm e when I say something that bodacious, I'm either crazy as a loon, or I'm onto something you might want to know more about doing it for the class, because <laughs> it's going to dwarf Silicon Valley. And I was in Silicon Valley in the 70s. I was there. I was there when it was happening. And, and I can tell you the great stories of things we used to dream about um, in those days that we knew would happen even though we didn't know how, and candidly, every dream we had now has been exceeded by the realities that have followed. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Ronaldo. So, uh, boy, that was, uh, that, you served up quite an appetizer there. Yeah, the, the entree is uh, Ronaldo's course, where it feels <laughs> a lot more. So, awesome. Yeah, thank you, Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're doing the program. <laughs> You're so expansive. You know, it's really appreciated. I, I love just to, you know, the, your, as you shine a spotlight with your vision on things. It's, it's awesome. So we're going to come back to uh, Ronaldo with lots more here uh, when we get into the listener questions. I want to just go now to, uh, to John here for a moment. We're going to bring some questions to each other. Uh, John, of course, you've been on the front line as a spiritual activist in business at Intel, uh, attending Wisdom 2.0. You're leading Global Oneness Day panels. Uh, the Conscious Business Initiative, you're, you're the architect of the uh, curriculum and community of practice. Uh, and so I just want to ask you, you know, about your unique perspective. How do you sit, see things unfolding uh, and, and, 
as this whole conscious business thing um, comes into full bloom, and, and what's the opportunity for these conscious business change agents who are participating in this? No, thanks, David, and, and thanks, uh, Ronaldo. You know, uh, hugely inspired by everything you're sharing, and I think um, you know, in terms of like what wants to emerge here, and why are we doing this? Why are, why are we? Why does the conscious business initiative exist? I think, Ronaldo, you you covered the gamma. You you named the big trends, and we see this in books and media. And we see this in you know my conversations with so many uh, thought leaders in in this whole uh, new progressive business movement, and it, I think there's two big realizations that are that are just dawning, and um, one is uh, as you as you've been sharing, Ronaldo, it's evolve or perish. You know the stakes are really very high uh, for business to to transform, and but the other theme that's coming out it's it's evolve and flourish that that actually. The business opportunities are immense, and there's no institution on the planet that is more um, enabled and powerful enough to to rapidly drive the kinds of transformations that we believe have to happen and, and will happen. So, um, you know, a lot of the uh, conversations um, that I've seen and we've been having uh, show that the sea change is happening. And one example I'll use, and I actually want to go back to the Ronaldo you talked about is. You, know, you don't have to leave a traditional business. Um, when I got infected with the bug of conscious business, and it just really broke my heart to just see that, wow, I can't just sit back and just concentrate on the one P that you talked about, profit. I, I've got to do something that addresses the other P's, people, planet, and presence. And I thought I'd have to leave the company I was in, which was Intel. But I actually found uh, once this intention was formed and I was all in, many doors opened. And right there at Intel, I was really hugely fortunate to do lots of amazing things, applying technology to the environment and to world problems. I got to be involved with some awesome people who, who launched this uh, the Awake at Intel Mindfulness Program. And uh, so uh, I just wanted to underscore that, that this is emerging in so many ways. If the Intel thing was almost from the grassroots up, in other places we have leaders like Paul Pullman or Elon Musk, at, you know, with the Tesla, they're doing it from the top down. But this transformation is absolutely emerging, it's coming, and it is part of the evolution we're going through as human beings. So how does it emerge? I think what we've really been rocking you know, as a community as we look at this is that we, we've seen all these separate islands of social, social business, conscious investing, um, you know, green businesses, and, and so forth. Um, beautiful, amazing work that's been done. Um, but I think what's what it's now naturally what we see is we're serving a movement that is taking off, and we believe that this movement, that business is now going to evolve in the way typically business has done in the past in many ways. And to share a little bit about that, like Ronaldo uh, talked about the the Silicon Valley uh, experience we saw. And big changes typically happen for business when a standard emerges and business sees, oh, you know, this is clearly the standard we need to embrace. And then training programs and best practices come together. Some people organize, how do we train to adopt this standard? And then the people who do that training go, get some level of certification. And then businesses can go, oh, well, I don't know how to transform into a conscious business uh, enterprise. I don't know how to introduce a mindfulness program. I don't know how to uh, change uh, how I deal with community and so on and so forth. They're going to look to the certified practitioners. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, you know, we've created a, a deck, the, the Conscious Business Declaration, which was uh, birthed through four institutions that came together on this and many, many conversations, boils down these essential seven principles that we're calling, it's the standard for business in the 21st century. It's a standard. And in businesses, uh, this training program we're launching is about bringing in the best practices. You know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are businesses and um, uh, pioneers that have been doing this successfully. So we're bringing that to the table. And the last thing is this conscious business change agent certification, um, which we think is going to be um, a huge um, uh, valued uh, qualification for those that, that come on board and in this community. 
because businesses will need uh, people that uh, can, can that are trained to do this work. Yeah, I'd like to just show you the cover of that book. I don't know if it's it's reversed, but this is yeah. Earth 2012. Right. And, and the the paragraph I referred to, the chapter that I wrote, really it's a brief chapter, is called "Ascent of the Phoenix: Colon Global Reconstruction." And what I'm talking about there is the business opportunity which presents itself when you literally are reconstructing the entire planet. Just to give you some idea of the power behind that. We have been engaged in a post-World War II reconstruction that started around 1947, 46, 47 really, and carried on a wave of economic growth that was astronomical the entire global economy and everybody on the planet well into the 60s and led ultimately to the moonshot. Well, that level of European and Japanese or Asian reconstruction pales in significance to global reconstruction. So I'm going to, I'd like to just read you the last sentence in that chapter because you'll get a sense of where I think the opportunity is for people who want to become skilled at this transformation. And, and I want to get, play off of what you said, John. It's one of the characteristics about business that I love is that wishing won't make it so. Mm -hmm. We can't just wrap ourselves in a warm fuzzy and believe, oh well, love will find a way, this will all turn out magically beautiful. I believe that business requires discipline. And I believe working on business consciousness requires even more discipline. And one of the disciplines is get good at your craft. If you want to sift being part of business consciousness, you need to learn the skills that you're relating to, John. You need to have those skills in order to get to that next level of the game. So as much as we can inspire people, and I love inspiring people, but as much as we can paint the big picture from 30,000 feet, which I love doing, at the end of the day, I'm used to making payrolls every two weeks. <laughs> and there's nothing quite as unforgiving as an employee who doesn't get their paycheck every two weeks. <laughs> it's the ultimate standard of are you real? And I've never missed yeah. one in my career, and I don't intend to. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thanks. But, but, yeah, so this is what, what, this, what you're selling, quote unquote, is what, and why I believe in it, is you're giving people a way to develop the skill sets that can go with what they're just naturally feeling internally is where their heart will bring them, but they don't know how to get there. And when they get there, well, they won't know what to do. So that's, that's why I'm suggesting that people might even want to read this short chapter. But here's, here's what I ended that chapter with. I said, oh, by the way, I want to put in one plug before I do this. We launched a service at the Business Academy a couple months ago. My goal is to get 100 million people to take a free service. It's now available to everybody on the planet. And the service is called the Optimist Daily. And what we will do is send to your email literally five true positive solution stories happening somewhere in the world. Every day, Monday through Friday at 3 a.m. And the it's reason a great, we do it's a great service. I really am enjoying it, Ronaldo. Thanks. Good. Yeah, okay. You guys so doing that. Case, you know, I've had people say, well, gee, why do you do five? And there's only one I or two I like. Well, the two you like might be different than the two Steve likes. So we do five. So we hopefully are going to hit something that everybody likes. Yeah. Because if you le read just one positive story, one solutions or story a day, it changes the way you spend the rest of your day. You go from the fear, the, the concern, the, 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 oh my God, what am I going to do? We're in a state of collapse. We're in entropy. And then all these things that I talk about to like, oh, wow. Look at that happened, and I didn't even know it. Oh, look, that happened, and I didn't know it. So I will, I will, my last quote is, would be to say, take the service, just write to us at the Academy, just write info at worldbusiness.org. We'll sign you up to the service for free. We're delighted to do it. Hope you will help us get it to other people. But you don't have to. Just read it yourself. 100 million people changing every, every day how they start their day. The, the quote I'd like to leave you with and why we're doing the Optimist Daily is, I have never seen, I read a lot, and I talk to a lot of people, and I listen to a lot of people. I've never seen, heard about, or read about any challenge human society is facing that cannot be solved with today's technology and resources. That includes climate change. That includes global population. So I'm not being little problems here. I'm talking the biggest ones you can imagine. So what's keeping this from happening? Why is it if we have the technology and the resources to solve every single challenge facing human civilization, we don't? And I would submit to you it's a lack of will. That's all. So if you will for that change, the next thing is, okay, how do I prepare for that change? And the answer is you have to develop skills. You can't just wish and make it be so. 
So with that, I'm going to end, the, uh, I'll end my participation with this. The, here's the last two sentences in the chapter. Like the mythical phoenix bird that rises from the ashes of the dead phoenix consumed by a fire of its own making, read climate change into that, a new economy can arise from the death of the old if, as a matter of conscious evolution, we choose to consciously create a system that is radically different from the one that is dying all around us. That new system would be based on the concept of global reconstruction arising out of a profoundly deeper sense of community. That's the reintegration of business and society. All right, yeah. thank you. Thank you, uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, awesome. I really appreciate the comments you brought in. And John, I wanted to thank you too. That was uh, terrific, just the way you, uh, you really pulled all of that together and, and talked about how these conscious business change agents fit into this uh, emerging standard for business that is that we do believe uh, we believe that uh, non-conscious businesses are going to enter into hospice. I think we're all kind of saying that in different words. That whereas this uh, conscious businesses are going to flourish. So there's such an incredible opportunity. John, thank you, and Ronaldo, thank you again. We're just going to get to a couple more questions, and then we're going to go to uh, our listener questions. Uh, John, I wanted to come back uh, to the conscious business curriculum real quick. Because, um, you know, of course, Ronaldo, uh, Ken Wilbur, Alan Watkins, and Lance Secretan, the four guests this week, are part of the faculty. But they're, it's a rich faculty. There's a lot of, uh, of incredible content, and, and the uh, leaders are quite extraordinary. Do you want to just share a little more about the, uh, the, the curriculum and the certification program itself? Yeah, it's absolutely. And uh, thanks, Penny, has put a link on the screen where you can um, see that you can go and take a look at this training program. So if you go to this page and scroll down, you'll see the, the lineup of the, the faculty that I'm, I'm um, the program I'm going to talk to you about. So um, we're, we're in, uh, really, um, think that this, uh, this, this program uh, is unique. It's a, it's the first of its kind and we're really um, ecstatic about the caliber of the faculty that we've been able to pull together to deliver this training. Um, some of the best uh, and the brightest really in this, this whole leading edge area of, of uh, business transformation. So um, I think that my, my you know, if you, if you see the declaration and you're inspired by that, um, then, uh, you know, the training is, is really designed to how do you take that, the principles of the declaration and put it into action. So it's inspired by the, uh, by the uh, declaration. It's also informed by the, the integral model, which uh, Ken Wilber shared at the, at the beginning in the, our first webinar. So it's, um, it's based, based on these powerful principles and the core principle of oneness that Steve talked about and Ronaldo also talked about is this, you know, this next stage in our evolution as a species really is, is the uh, uh, realization and uh, dawning of this consciousness that we are all interrelated and interconnected. So this training program is based on all of that. And our goal uh, with the designing this is to give people the, the, the practices, the, the inspiration, the skills, the tools that needed to go do this kind of work. Uh, and uh, it's a, it's a three-month program and we've combined it with uh, membership in a, in a, a community of practice, uh, a three-month me a complementary membership in this community of practice that follows the training. Um, so it's uh, Steve mentioned it's, it's off, you know, we're offering this now at a 60 percent. Uh, the, the inaugural launch is 60 percent off the regular price. Um, you know, that quickly if you just to give you a flavor for the training, you'll see this if you go to the website uh, and you um, uh, there's an inspirational uh, and vision section that we begin with, which Ken Wilbur will will lay out the integral model as it relates to business. And Alan Watkins, which many of you people saw uh, speak yesterday, uh, both Ken and Alan were on webinars this week, Alan will go into the practical way, how do you bring that in to, to businesses that are even some of the most uh, entrenched in the old paradigm? How can you bring in this new model and, and transform the way they operate? Uh, Chris Laszlo, who's um, uh, from the Fowler Center, has been a huge part of our whole uh, thinking around the curriculum and the program. Uh, he will bring in uh, lots of perspectives on how businesses can flourish. And like Ronaldo was talking about, all these untold stories. I mean, there's truly a renaissance happening in business, and the media doesn't even pick up on it. So Chris will be sharing about that. Then we shift into the section. It's about proven methodology, skills, and practices. 
And this is really the, the, the roll up our sleeves and learn the skills, the methodologies to actually do this work. Um, whether you're uh, an entrepreneur, you're a coach consultant, or you're working inside of a large company. Um, so Ronaldo, as we've just been hearing, will we'll bring in perspectives around how do you apply, uh, you know, how do you launch environmental programs in a business? Uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, um, who, uh, as many of you know, is a tremendous thought leader on, on the uh, whole uh, question of evolution, will bring in um, a, a perspectives on how we connect other sectors of the world to, to evolve as a business. Uh, Peter Matthews will bring in very specific skill sets around conflict resolution, operating in pressure environments. Um, Peter is a, uh, is the, leads the Conscious Business Institute. Um, Matthew Levin will bring in uh, a class around financial transparency. Oziyama Egwanu Eg will bring in, uh, who's a master of how do you bring businesses into community engagement. Where how do you make business a model citizen in the local and the global communities in which they operate? Uh, my a friend, a former colleague at Intel, Lindsay Van Drill, will talk to you about um, how do you launch a, a business mindfulness program. And Lindsay leads uh, one of the most successful corporate mindfulness programs in the world right now with the Awake at Intel program. Um, Hank Queen, a former uh, executive of Boeing. Uh, will share an engagement program that turned around uh, Boeing at a critical time in its, uh, in its history. Uh, Hank was a senior VP of Boeing and managed over 40,000 employees. So he has amazing uh, program that has been informed by wisdom traditions and heart math and mindfulness but around engagement. Uh, Ilma Barros Pose, uh, who is uh, world recognized and uh, for uh, working in the theory you and appreciative inquiry will we'll uh, share those skills. So that's the skills and practices part of the training. The other part of the training that's really important and we've uh, recognized is you can have all these skills and practices but you still need to know how to translate that to leaders and inspire them, get them involved and interested in even doing the program. Um, many of you may have tuned in to Lance Secretan who's going to be teaching a couple of sessions on this. Lance is a master in how do you articulate and express these kinds of transformation programs in a way that get people excited and they want to engage. Then we have some specialized uh, areas in the training. Um, if you're a coach consultant, George Cow is going to give you, you know, lots of proven approaches to um, conscious marketing and sales. How do you, how do you launch your consulting career? Uh, Steve Farrell is going to share his uh, amazing journey and experiences as a successful entrepreneur in the Silicon Valley uh, and teach an entrepreneur class. I'm going to share my experience and teach uh, uh, an intrapreneur class. How do you navigate the uh, culture of a large business and manage to do, uh, bring about amazing transformation and changes? So these are um, topics. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is end with a class that is all about uh, the community of practice. Because um, we know that no matter how skilled and uh, proficient you are as, as a leader, when you actually get out into the world and um, to do this work, we need each, the support of each other in community. So we'll talk about the community of practice. And Kwa Veda um, will help me uh, lead that, that class. Um, Last, uh, I'll say about the training program is we have sprinkled throughout the whole program lots of interactivity, in fact, sessions where students can meet with each other. And we'll start to form this community of practice with very specific topics while we're in the three-month training program. So then when we exit the training and go into the community of practice, we already have a running start. John? Yes. Ronaldo has to go. Say goodbye. Okay, <laughs> Ronaldo. Thank you, Thank Ronaldo. You. Yeah, hopefully you can. Can you all hear me now? Yes, yeah. we can, John. We can't right, see you, but we can yeah. hear you. Ronaldo, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, wow, <laughs> just incredible. Thank you, Steve. We can hear you. John, thank you. And it's been a pleasure being with you folks. And uh, hopefully there will be more to come. Yeah, Absolutely. we look forward. You'll hear lots more from Ronaldo uh, here during the, his uh, his program and the curriculum. And apologies to everybody. My uh, looks like my web internet connection went down here right in the middle of our webinar. I'm now on a phone connection, so I've got audio anyway.
So hey, thank goodness for uh, telephones when when uh, your web connection goes down. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, Steve, we can hear you fine. All right, awesome. Well, um, John, is this a good time for to invite uh, Penny to bring in uh, listener questions? Uh, I think it is. Um, I know we lost you there for a minute, uh, Steve. Uh, it, we can bring in those questions. Also, just maybe just took a few words uh, and share. You know, your experience in the Silicon Valley was quite extraordinary. If there's anything more you wanted to share uh, about just uh, what you learned from that, you know, being a conscious business as a startup business. Um, or if not, we can go right into the questions. I'll just kind of leave that up to you. Yeah, I feel this pace has been so well covered uh, in starting yeah. with Ronaldo, uh, you know, back earlier sure. in the call when he said these sunrise opportunities that are emerging are enormous. And uh, John, you uh, covered it well. Okay. I brought in a little bit of it when I talked about my Silicon Valley experience where I got uh, you know, where I, I, uh, I was really uh, scared, I mean, just to, to use a word, when we uh, transitioned into all these conscious practices, I threw away my day planner and, and these things. Uh, and I felt like, well, I'm, I'm going to be true to myself, you know, and my business may suffer, but I'm going to at least be true to myself and we're going to bring in these conscious practices. And then, much to my surprise, uh, my business, which was already doing well, uh, did, did even better. And as I reflect back on that, of course, it's so obvious why uh, a conscious business is going to do well. Because when our employees and our customers and our whole stakeholder community and the community itself, the schools we're involved in and so on, where they feel this real heart connection and we're engaging the heart in addition to the mind and where you know truth and authenticity and love, loving kindness uh, and things that are what consciousness is, it's what oneness is where people feel that, you know, of course your business is going to thrive. So uh, I want to just, um, you know, share mm -hmm. that again, kind of put that out there for people that are listening into these webinars. Uh, there's just the incredible opportunity that's here to just to engage these skills in business. And uh, we're going to then create the world that we want for ourselves, our next generation and the earth. Uh, but we can also make a really great income in the process. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so uh, maybe this is a good time. Um, I just really just was so glad for you to bring that in because we, we didn't have an opportunity for, to do that. But uh, is this a good time? Should, um, you know, Penny, um, Garth, are there questions we want to bring in uh, in the time we have here? Sure, yes. There's some great questions and actually a lot of just a lot of people really appreciating Ronaldo. So, you know, Ronaldo is brilliant and he looked. Um, so uh, all kinds of comments like that, but there's some really great questions as well. So here's one from Lisa. Lisa says, do you envision companies being willing to introduce spirituality into their leadership training programs to enhance business consciousness? Or is that still considered problematic because it might be deemed religious? Mm, that's a great question. Yeah, John, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Um, Sure. Well, I'll, I'll start with just one thought that um, there's many ways to do this. And um, spirituality uh, or the principle of oneness, of course, is also different than religion. We're not talking about bringing in any ideology or religion in with this program. We're just addressing a universal principle of oneness, which is certainly the religions have talked about for thousands of years, but it's a proven and leading um, physics and biology, this is being shown over and over. Um, quantum physics shows that you can't separate consciousness from matter. There really is a, a fundamental reality of oneness. But I, I would just share that in my experience, um, while at Intel, for example, the, the Awaken Intel program we brought in, we didn't have to talk about Buddhism. We didn't have to talk about the, 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 where mindfulness came from, the, the principles of mindfulness. Uh, are, are hugely um, powerful and uh, we, we were able to navigate that very well and so that's part of what we'll be teaching in this training class is how do you match these skills to the culture you're in and keep it um, very uh, um, ac accessible. So Steve, what, you know, anything? Yeah, no, like just right on that? target and uh, you know just to, to kind of embellish those points, the um, as we know, in 1933, Erwin Schrödinger was the Nobel Prize winner for physics, and and one of his quotes at that time was, "Quantum physics thus reveals a basic oneness 
of the universe. Now, this is a Nobel Prize winner, and this, this was a quote from over 80 years ago. So I think where we uh, keep it on the level of the declaration, we were very deliberate in the language that we chose, uh, talking about oneness, about uh, the interconnection of all of life, um, where we uh, leave it on the level of consciousness, uh, that business can embrace it better, uh, because we do need to talk to people from where they sit. And uh, sometimes spirituality is uh, mixed up with religion. Um, so yes, I, w I would keep it on, on that level, and uh, I think people then can relate to it. People certainly relate to science, and, uh, uh, and, and they're curious you know, when you bring in uh, not only what Erwin Schrodinger shared, but as we know, there are many contemporary scientists today that uh, made this their life work, Nassim Harriman and Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden and Lynn McTaggart and so many. Uh, that uh, our, our speakers, their authors, uh, there's a lot of uh, wisdom now that's been distilled from science that says, uh, you know, there, everything is connected. There is one reality. So, yeah, I think we'll have better success in general uh, where, we're, uh, where we're talking from that framework. Great, okay. thanks. Uh, well, I have to bring in this comment. Somebody wrote in on email, Elizabeth, she said, thank you so much, Ronaldo. It, Ronaldo is my favorite, waves of aloha. And I had to bring that in because I've <laughs> been living in Hawaii, so right. aloha to Elizabeth. And this is an interesting question um, from Tara. Where does real estate development and property management lie within this concept or spectrum of a sunset sunrise business? Gosh, let me, let me just share, um, you know, uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, Dwayne Elgin, and, and others actually talk about this. Uh, Ronaldo probably does too, that the big trend here is toward eco-communities, uh, that uh, conscious communities, intentional communities, uh, where uh, people are together practicing these, pra or, or embracing and living in these practices of consciousness. So. Uh, I think there's uh, that is a, a huge new wave. Uh, people that are in real estate, if I were in real estate, I would study that. I think that there's a, a great opportunity to create housing, to create communities uh, for people, and to make uh, a, a really good income by just helping to put that vision on the ground. I think that's what's unfolding now in the area of real estate. And there, there are other, uh, other mm -hmm. opportunities as well, but that's one. Yeah, and no, I'll, I'll just throw in another example to what Steve's saying is uh, one of our um, friends in this conscious business community is a man named Adam Hall who leads um, the Earth Keeper. And there's an example of um, being able to do real estate development where you're actually, um, at the same time, you're preserving land and, and restoring it. And yet, at the same time, incorporating development in it that's very consciously done and environmentally done. So it's incredible what can be done, and that's, that's a whole new dimension of, of what real estate development is, is emerging towards. Mm. Great. Yeah, thank you both. So this is, a, this is more around the conscious, the training and the community of practice. This person asks, when I'm out in the field transforming a company to a conscious business, will I be supported if I have questions? Yeah, John, that's you, a good you one for you. start with that one? Yeah, so um, great question. One of the things that was uh, really, we've really been getting and through all our conversations over the past year and a half is there's three really fundamental pieces to what we're trying to do, and I mentioned we mentioned it before. There's the declaration, there's the training program, but the third piece we talk a lot about is the the, the uh, conscious business community of practice. And, and in our view, it's just this is fundamental because if you get trained and certified in, a, in something, and but you go off on your own as a lone cowboy doing that work, um, that that's not the, the optimum formula for success. We believe this, we're at a point now with conscious business where it is emerging as a movement and for that we need a community and we've created this community of practice which will launch in August right after the first training program. And we view that as um, a community where you can be sustained and supported, uh, get inspired, help inspire others and, expand, and continue to expand your levels of mastery in this whole work. Um, the training will provide a beautiful foundation 
but you'll want to you'll come out of the training and maybe want to go deep into two or three specific areas. The community of practice is designed for that. So we, um, when you join this community of practice, and everyone that gets in on the ground floor for this first program, we're adding three months of membership um, as part of the training enrollment uh, package. We're just because we want people to to jump into this community with us. And when you do, um, you'll find uh, there's ways to get knowledge, form partnerships, build your network out, uh, participate with others in how we're going to go create a program at a given company. Um, and also, uh, it is the uh, where we'll um, do those that come out of the training program have this opportunity to become certified as uh, conscious business change agents by developing their project plan for conscious business, have it peer reviewed and approved and, and ratified. Um, so there's that, you know, the, the certification process which we want to complete in the community. And then there's this ongoing opportunity to participate in four different forums. There's a community forum, there's a forum that's a conscious business sales and marketing. It's all about how do we go out and market and sell, you know, these, uh, these programs. There's a business transformation skills and practices forum where we'll continue to do more levels of mastery and people can complete their, their project. And, um, and the last, there's business for a thriving world forum where we'll deal with projects much like Ronaldo was talking about. You know, how do you help businesses go after a, uh, you know, an environment, create an environmental program or a community program and the like. So um, we, uh, yeah, that's, hopefully that ad addresses the question. Yeah, boy, that's awesome. Thanks, John. And and I just want to say that community of practice is such a, a crucial piece. And um, it uh, where, of course, these this, the declaration and these principles are new in business, uh, and to be certified is is important. But even with certification, to just go out into the world alone to do this work would be quite challenging, uh, because there are going to be many uh, challenges, many obstacles, many questions of how does this work and how do I do this? Uh, and uh, this community of practice to bring together the consultants virtually and to support them with wisdom, to support them with the forums that are on these threads of, uh, uh, of uh, opportunity. And then to support them emotionally, candidly, uh, where they're uh, out working with, in many cases, with, uh, with unconscious uh, people and, un and unconscious businesses. It's, it's huge. Uh, this might be a good time, too, to just bring in um, you know, kind of close this whole thing up uh, just to make sure everybody can really see what's here. Um, we'll get to some thank yous too into the program next week. But um, so what we are talking about, of course, is uh, a program, this conscious business training and certification program where it creates these conscious business change agents. Uh, there will only be 100 people that we're going to enroll because most of it is live. We're trying to keep the participation small enough to where we can have the level of interaction that we want. Um, it's 1497 call it $1,500. Uh, the, the normal price will be 3500 For this inaugural course, we're bringing it down to about 60% off. It's, it's uh, 1500 It does start May 2nd, and it's closed down uh, as of May 2nd. We're getting a real strong enrollment, so, uh, and we, uh, there's, a, there's an excellent chance we're going to go uh, to the 100. So, if you're interested, please do look at that. Uh, go to the web address there, the Humanities Team web, web address. Look at that page that, uh, that lays out the whole program and the curriculum to see if it might be something you're interested in. Um, and uh, just encourage you to enroll if it's something you feel called to. There is a two-week um, period when you can get a full refund uh, from the May 2nd start date, and then there's a half 50% refund all the way through halfway through the course. So you'll be protected. Um, and it includes that uh, three-month free community of practice thing as well. That's a $300 value. So it's a really, we, we really made this uh, attractive for these first hundred that are going through the program. There will be another program in the fall, probably start in September, uh, and we're anticipating at the $3,500 price then. Um, Let's see. Let me just thank people because we're right at the end here. Uh, apologies for my that my video connection went down. I think otherwise the audio and video was uh, was great here. Uh, thank you so much, Penny Heipel, uh, Garth Catterall, who were running the webinar. It's not their fault that my uh, my, 
my web connection went down. Thank you to John Thomas, my partner, the, the co-convener of these uh, webinar programs. Thank you, John, and uh, and of course, my God, Ronaldo Brutico, who uh, is is amazing. He's just brilliant, and uh, he's not with us right now. But I want to thank him so much for participating. And last. Uh, definitely not least, I want to thank all of you. We have over 2,600 people registered for the webinar. So thank you to all of you for registering. And it's the, we really take this as important, this conscious business change agent work. We are a, a not-for-profit. We're not a, a for-profit organization. So we created this whole program not to uh, make tons of money ourselves, but to train people that we feel are much needed in today's world, that, that to provide them with a toolkit to transform existing businesses to conscious businesses or to start new conscious businesses. So thank you. Thank you to all of you. And uh, our program next week, uh, tune in. We just, uh, in the last 24 hours, decided to create a new program for next week. It's on Wednesday, April 27th. It's going to be at this normal time, 10 to 11.30 Pacific time. And uh, Neil Donald Walsh will be our uh, special guest with uh, John Thomas and I. And uh, so I think you're going to, if you're registered for the program, you'll see an invitation to join that webinar. Join us next week. We're going to try and wrap everything up just before we start the curriculum on Monday, May 2nd. So thanks, everybody. And thanks. I look forward to being back with you next week. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Take care, everybody. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye.